And again, thank you for joining our webinar on Salesforce.com versus Sugar CRM, brought to you by Brain Cell Technologies. Today, um, I'd like to introduce Garrett Hogan. He's an account executive here at Brain Cell. Garrett, are you there? Good. Good afternoon, Sonia. <laughs> morning, morning, yeah. afternoon, Garrett. Good, right. good. Um, so Garrett and I work hand in hand, um, trying to help customers all over the country choose uh, an appropriate CRM solution and and more um, for their business. So our agenda for today, just a little bit about who we are and what we're doing here. Um, then a couple slides, like I said, just a couple on main features between Sugar and Salesforce price comparisons, which everyone loves, and then we're going to do some live demos. Um, sorry, Garrett, I'm going to go first on the Salesforce side, then we're going to hand it over to you for about a 10-minute demo. We're going to go quick lead to cash just to show you guys mainly what the user interfaces look like of these two programs who are often stacked up against each other, and then some open QA. So a quick minute about who BrainCell is. Well, we're based in the Boston area, but we have offices all over the country. We think about consulting first. We really care, what are your needs? Is this a fit or not for which program? Um, if, you know, if you're considering a couple, we sometimes do vendor selection for companies. So we'll look at what are the options that are on the table and what might be a better fit um, for y'all and systems that need to integrate. And we are certified in both Salesforce and Sugar among a lot of other products, as you can see on the right-hand side of our page. Um, one that we need to change there is that we also represent Intact. Um, we'll be doing a webinar in just a few short weeks on Salesforce and Intact and how those two systems combine and operate to make a really nice, fully, fully operational CRM and ERP system kind of combined. <clears throat> so look out for that one coming up in your email. We have been doing this for over 20 years. And again, core focus on consulting and needs analysis before we throw software at, at you. So that's why you're seeing so many products on the right-hand side. We also deal a lot with marketing automation systems and blending these three big silos of software together to create a predictable revenue chain for your business. Look out for some of those webinars coming up too. So. Some quick factors to consider as we go through these slides, pricing, ease of use, user adoption, integrations, and additional fees. We have some real basic stuff here. Both systems come with good support. Um, for phone support, sometimes you'd, you'd get charged more for that between the two systems. And deployment style is huge. Salesforce is on demand only, just like Gmail or Facebook. You cannot host it internally on your own servers. You can do that with Sugar. That's very attractive for some companies that want to have a solution hosted in their own architecture or maybe on their own private cloud environment. This can be cost effective for a lot of different scenarios. Let's talk about HIPAA compliance. It can be much better to have your CRM system hosted on a HIPAA compliant private environment rather than paying a lot more for Salesforce a HIPAA compliancy, which is an offering. It can still be HIPAA compliant. You're just going to pay for that service. Limitations? Well, there is a limitations guide on Salesforce. Um, there are definitely some upcharges. Um, for data overages, API limitations. You can only have so many calls on the API per time period. That doesn't apply to Sugar. Um, so no API limits there, but there are data limits for data storage. And usually the only things that apply to your data storage are things like file uploads, email archives. So in any CRM system, you really do want to stray away from attaching large um, vector files, PDF files, that will add to your data overage limit. And then the architecture is quite different between the two. Salesforce is an Apex code base. It's a proprietary language. So you're going you're gonna to pay for that. There are some, um, some really desirable programmers out there that know Apex well. Um, they're very versed in the Salesforce code language. And with Sugar, you're going to get an open source PHP code base. So 
a much more widely known language, but most of the customizations that 90% of companies that we deal with do is point and click configuration within these systems. That's the beauty of where we are today in CRM is that there's very little programming needed <clears throat> most of the time for implementations on CRM. It's mostly point and click. And I tell people, if you have a couple admin type users at your company that understand computers um, and interfaces in general, you shouldn't have much trouble configuring screens and fields in either system. They're both very user friendly for configuring. This is the breakdown on pricing. You, of course, you can go to either's website and find um, there are multiple versions. <clears throat> For the purpose of this webinar, we're not looking at the lower versions of Salesforce. They do have a contact level, um, and you know there are a couple different levels that you can sign on to below the professional level in Salesforce. For the purpose of this webinar, we're going to be talking about professional and enterprise edition in both Salesforce and Sugar because they're apples to apples pretty much. So we can see here the professional version of Salesforce comes in at $75 a user a month and 150 a user a month on enterprise. And right there you see that on Sugar you got 40 and 65. Hosting is of course included in both of these. Obviously it is a Salesforce because that's how it's that is how it's hosted, cloud product. Sugar, you don't pay any difference if you bring it on premise or if you have it in their on-demand cloud infrastructure. So it's the same price no matter what. And these are, I know this is basic, but I'll repeat it. These are both SaaS systems, software as a service. You have to pay annually for these systems for access. So if you stop paying, you lose access. Even if you host Sugar on site, you still lose access. So what comes with that, that yearly fee? Of course, all your support, version upgrades. And if you're on the on-demand on environment, they'll just push these upgrades to you. And with Salesforce, there's actually a console where you can choose different upgrades that are coming out and deploy those org-wide on your version of Salesforce. And then we do this too, just so you can see at scale. Almost all of these solutions out there will charge you annually for the solution. So this is for one user, you can see the annual price here and here, and then on scale, if you've got 50 users, that's about where you're going to be. This doesn't include services. Usually, companies will sign up for services with, um, you know, some end user training, configuration, data migration, anything like that. That's why BrainCell exists. We help companies deploy and drive adoption. Ooh, demos. All right. We don't like PowerPoint, so that's the end of the PowerPoint for us. We're going to dive right into a quick Salesforce demonstration. And then I'm going to hand the screen over to Garrett, and Garrett's going to mimic what I'm doing in Salesforce, but he's going to do it in Sugar. Please, again, put your questions in the questions box as we roll through here, and we'll try to answer these as they come in or right after the demonstrations. So. We're going to start in Salesforce. I am showing the Lightning interface. Every new client, pretty much, that's signing on to Salesforce is going to be onboarded to this new UI, user interface. They've dubbed it Lightning. You still, in most orgs, what they call each slice of Salesforce that you get, um, your instance of Salesforce, you can choose if you want to see it in the classic view or the Lightning view. So if you've got a friend, who's already working on Salesforce at a different company, they may still be on Classic View. And there are plans to transition each org over to Lightning View when they're ready. So what you're seeing here is the new UI that came out last year, Lightning, and this is a dashboard. Um, you can create dashboards and push them out company-wide or user-wide. And what you're seeing here is pretty simple, upcoming events, things to do today, my top deals, recent records, Reports, really anything showing on a dashboard. The nav, I can stack things up here of most use. I keep it really simple. And then right here, this nifty button, this is kind of your 
your nav, and you can control, I'll point to click, point and click, you can control what shows up here. So, I'm going to go over to a lead list. And you'll see this list view is mimicked in pretty much every part of Salesforce. So it looks the same um, across different modules. We call them modules in, in both systems. Um, this is just a piece of the system that's going to be related to two other pieces as you see going forward here. Really easy for me to toggle. They give you preset filter views. You're going to notice this is kind of similar in Sugar here, where I can see uh, recently viewed leads, or maybe I want to go to all my open leads or international leads. And then, of course, you can create a segment, too, or a filter, showing leads that fit a certain criteria. So I can add a filter here. Say I want to show everything that has an annual revenue of such and such, or maybe just new leads. And that's how you create what shows up, or you organize what shows up in your list view here. Let's create a lead by pressing New. And I'm going to start here by first line na name, last name. The red asterisk notes, of course, that this is a required field. Very easy in the UI to control what you see and what gets required in all of these layouts. So let's go ahead and today we're going to be working with new balance and Katrina. And Katrina works at New Balance as the VP of product. She came in through a partner of ours of course, all of these drop-downs are completely customizable by you. Website, anything else I want to put in there, this is, uh, I would make this a required field internally. Okay, Clark at newbalance.com. Now, I will say that you can also get leads into the system in, in different ways. This is very manual. I'll tell you right up front, this is not going to happen that often. Um, usually, you're going to be getting a bunch of leads maybe on a, on a spreadsheet, an Excel sheet. You can upload those in bulk in both systems, Sugar and Salesforce. If you have a marketing automation system like Marketo or Acton, they will be flowing in automatically and you won't even have to create them manually. And you also have the option to have an Outlook or Gmail integration. And if someone emails you out of the blue, you can right with an Outlook, add them in as a lead into Salesforce or Sugar. Sugar has the functionality too. Third option is a web to lead form. Uh, if you have a marketing automation system, that's already taken care of. It's going in through form data, pushing in through the automation system. Or if you, you're not ready for automation yet, then you can just have a simple WordPress form, let's say, and that WordPress form can be mapped into the CRM database and be created automatically. Saves a lot of time. When they go in, the lead status will be open and not contacted. Maybe that shows up in my filter or my dashboard, and I'm prompted to contact this person right away. I'm going to rate it as hot. And the number of employees is a lot. All right. This looks great. I'm going to save this. And Katrina is now created in my system as a lead. So you can see here, I've got stages of the deal. Um, these are called paths in Salesforce, and you can create different paths as you move along. Um, the admins do that. They say, OK, if this is a new lead, these are things that you have to complete. And you can actually prompt people to do certain things within these paths. I see very basic information here, pretty clean. Title, company, phone, email, and if I want to see more good stuff just on her address or whatever, I go to details, and I can see all of that here. Activity, uh, there is a really nice email integration here, so I can pretty quickly um, just go in here, and I can start 
creating an email and send it all from the interface. I can also do this, of course, from Outlook or Gmail. If I press a certain button, which is send an archive, a copy of this email gets archived and will be nestled here in my activity of Katrina's record. Great. So I'm going to mark this status. I'm going to mark this as complete. So I'm going along, and Salesforce can also prompt me to do certain things. So fill out certain fields as I move along in the stages. So new duplicates were found. That's good. It's warning me right here. And it's giving me some news. It's scraping and maybe saying some things that may apply to New Balance. It doesn't look like it's doing a great job at that, but it's trying. We'll see more on that in the next page. And let's convert Katrina now. Because Katrina said, oh, wow, your services look great. I'd like to have you in our headquarters in Boston. Big dream. That sounds awesome. All right, let's convert her. So the converted status, that's applying to this lead record here. She's kind of closed out, and she's moved on to the next stage of the journey, which is she's going to be converted into a contact with an account. And it's prompting me here to search for accounts. Um, this is a little, it's a little clunky. I don't, I don't love this, but it's prompting me to say, hey, let's, let's look at this and see if there's a duplicate. And it, it's, it's not uh, already in the system. So I'm looking. Uh, nothing's been found. This is a pretty manual way of just checking, ha, ha, is something already in the system for these guys or not? And no, it's not, so I'm going to create a new account. And some of the things follow over. You can see like the phone number and the rating is followed over. That's great. I can associate this with a parent account, give her a number, all that good stuff. Now, just because I'm converting her doesn't mean that she's a customer. She's simply moved on to the next stage of the journey um, it, by promoting her to a contact within an account to make the journey a little more holistic. We'll show you that in the next step. So she's still a prospect type. And of course, you're going to be able to change these values, obviously. All right. So oh, that all looks good. Basic stuff. Let's save it. I can also create an opportunity on the fly. She told me that she's potentially interested in 500 users. That sounds good. So let's convert her. All right, here we go. We've got New Balance, the account, Katrina, the contact now, and the opportunity is 500 users. That would be nice. So the lead is kind of closed out. Salesforce kind of hides that from you. If you try to search for her, you're just really going to get the contact from now on. It knows that it's a historical thing and it's been converted closed. That's good. So let's go now to the account New Balance. Ooh, this is fun. It's showing me some potential things here. Seeing some potential news articles. It's doing a much better job now. It's not giving me majority of Donald Trump stuff, which is good news. I can see that, you know, Robert, I guess, is the president and CEO. That's cool. I can link a Twitter account. This is kind of a manual process, but it's cool. If I press that link, it's searching, and it's showing me um, potential links in Twitter for a new balance. And yeah, uh, that looks at, yeah, okay, select. And I, when I set it up, um, when I set up my user in Salesforce, I put in my Twitter, my personal Twitter. And wow, we both follow Lululemon and Hootsuite. That's cool. <clears throat> this would come in handy, of course, if <clears throat> this were, excuse me, a more personal uh, connection. No surprise that they follow Lululemon. That's cool, but uh, no big deal. So you could potentially find some interesting linkage here uh, with friends or with people that you follow and are influenced by. And then I see some basic stuff below. We've kept this org really simple. But you could have quite a rolling page here of stuff. Um, you could see a lot more than what we've chosen to show in our org. So we're just showing really contacts, notes, and attachments. And then we go into Katrina to see more about her, um, you know, cases, so support cases. 
opportunity data. Um, you know, any other calls or meetings. We'd see that if we dug into Katrina's record. But you can, of course, choose what shows up on these screens in your org. Same with sugar. Details. This is all the good stuff that I filled out in that form field. And I just want to show you guys, it's pretty easy here, um, just to go in and edit. And Garrett will show us that too in sugar and save. And so that's how you save something in line, just basic Rolodex data is what we call it. And then on this side here, again, I can choose what, what I want to show people and my org, but I can send an email, um, I could book an appointment, anything like that. So next steps, um, I can control what shows up in next steps as the org leader. So I can kind of move people's cadence along by prompting them to do things. And both of these products have really strong workflow. So it's possible that you can make a workflow in both Salesforce and Sugar to order certain things upon an action. So if there's an opportunity, then a task gets created to check in the next day. So automation, both systems have that ability. And both are very good. Sorry for stealing that, Garrett. So. <laughs> Not a problem. The hover. The hover's cool. Um, it shows me like that summation again of what things I need to worry about on Katrina, if anything. And again, I can create a new someone to add to the new balance area here too. So let's go into Katrina. I just want to show the contact here. And I can see now any notes and attachments. I can upload stuff or just write things. Campaign history, that could be coming in from Act On, my marketing automation, or MailChimp. Cases or complaints or tickets when she does become a customer. <clears throat> and opportunity here. So let's click on this opportunity. You can see this path is way different. And they do have some predetermined paths based on sales methodology. There's one for Miller-Hyman. Um, there's some others. So they're kind of like preset paths. And what I'm seeing here is the opportunity. And I can go into details. Um, and I can say the amount. This should have been something that was prompted for sure on a required field. But this is, you know, $125,000. Great. My next step is go on site for a demo. And the sales stage here, you can see, is in the path. So I can control the sales stage from just changing it here or clicking on the path, and it advances the deal. Types, it's a lot of good stuff that probably should be required. And I say save. There we go, and I can even relate products to this opportunity, too, if I was more of a, a materials kind of widget builder. So moving along to qualification, great. So that's moving a stage along. Great. So, um, you know, anything else on scheduling appointments or follow-up? Um, I just have emails here, but you would simply add another um, you know, activity here if you wanted to schedule a follow-up. And controlling email right through here as well. So I'm going to take a minute here. Well, actually, I just want to show the calendar, too. There's a nice calendar view where I can drag and drop stuff and change things around if I have permission to do so. But I'm going to take a second here to answer some questions that have come in, and then we'll, we'll hand it over to Garrett. Again, our purpose here is to give a real high-level overview because this could take all day long. So very high-level overview here. So um, I'm just going to take a couple of these questions. So how involved is data transfer from Salesforce to Sugar, vice versa? Daniel asked that. That's a great question. Moving CRM systems is never a small task. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's pretty similar going from you know, any system out there. So it depends, Daniel, on how much data you have in your previous system moving into the, into the new one. Um, there are some automated tools that we have here that we, we will 
automate the data transfer into a new system. It's not as easy as just uploading an Excel sheet um, if you're an existing CRM user, because things are related and nestled under each other, so there's a lot of relationships that we have to maintain when we upload CRM data. So it um, basically, short answer, we all of us consultants out here like brain cell, we have to look at your data in order to tell you how easy it is, and then we give you a quote on moving it all. Um, great, so another question in Salesforce, if you already have the classic setup and you want to set up a new instance, will it have to be the Lightning interface or will it be classic? Uh, that's a great question. I believe they are giving people the option to show to show classic, but if you set up a new org, it's going to be in Lightning. But you do, I, I believe you will still have the option to, to view classic. Um, and then it is, it is neat if you're an existing classic user, there's a whole Lightning onboarding section uh, in your admin area where you can choose to just deploy Lightning to certain users and they do give you a rollout plan and things. So it's quite useful. And we do have some duplicate checking. Nick asked a great question um, if there's duplicate checking. And there is, as we saw that too. Um, all right, I'm gonna do some other of these just in the, in the chat so we can keep things efficient. Um, and there is one great question from Jessica that we'll tackle here. Um, which CRM do you recommend for call centers using 5.9 or Ring Central? And either, and I, we, we're going to do, we do other webinars, you know, on all of these things, but I want to show you guys a great integration that works with both Salesforce and Sugar. And it's tenfold. This is one of our awesome partners. They integrate with both platforms, and really what it does is when someone calls you or you call them, this thing pops out and it links with the CRM record. So I'm able to go in here, write some notes, it times the call. I can relate it saying, oh yeah, this was a good call, or dead, not good, or I left a voicemail. And this creates a call record in your CRM, and it'll be a, a call that's held. And you can also do things like you can prompt it by saying follow up, tomorrow, and it will actually create a call or a task for you to do tomorrow. So this really makes it easy for you to keep moving, and it shows up in every Chrome window. So you just have to be using Chrome, and that will work with both 5.9 and Ring Central. It's a really long answer, but really cool integration. So without further ado, um, Garrett, I'm going to pass presentership over to you. And guys, we'll be asking another poll question at the end here. If you want a personal demo of either or both, we can set that up too. Um, but I will say the one really neat thing about both of these systems is they're, you know, they're super scalable and enterprise ready. So you've got um, thousands and thousands of developers out there creating integrations like that tenfold integration that I just showed you for these systems. So you're going to find a big ecosystem of plugins and products that will help make the solution more sticky and easy to use. So we love that. So Garrett, making you presenter here. Thank you, Sonia. And um, yeah, <clears throat> and also with the, the, the phone integration too, you know, uh, like the Tenfold and some of the other systems in the marketplace, you know, great analytics that come with it, but also mm. pulling all that data in the CRM, being able to analyze everything under one single silo, your CRM database, that's, yep. that's the good stuff. Um, okay, so why don't we do this? Why don't we go through, and we're going to mimic basically what Sonia did in Salesforce uh, through the Sugar CRM interface. And so I'm going to start with the dashboard view, and we'll work from lead to cash. So you can see here I've got this nice little demo up on my screen, and everyone can see my screen, right, Sonia? Yep, looks great. Always good to double check that. <clears throat> now, Sugar has some very sophisticated dashboards out of the box. It also allows you to create very sophisticated reports because it's an open architecture software. And those reports could have charts and graphs. You could be creating different list views, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. And you can place all that information directly on your dashboard. So just like Salesforce, I could be logging into the system, and I could have access to all of these different dashlets. 
Now, a user is going to be able to control the dashlets that they see on their screen. Hey, when, I, when Garrett Hogan logs in, this is exactly what I want to see, new leads, open cases to resolve, whatever it is. Um, of course, management is going to want a completely different view. So in, in, a, in a typical sense, <clears throat> the user simply just goes up here, modifies the dashboard, and puts the dashlets in place that they, for the information that they'd like to see. If you want to control that in mass, it's not going to be available out of the box, it is, though it is on the list of future updates. Uh, but there is a nice little plugin that allows you to control it so you can dictate what users see when they log into the system. So here's some examples of an open-ended architecture with Sugar. Uh, here we are looking at some sales opportunity data, uh, current contacts I may be working with, my forecast coming down the line, um, leads by uh, status by rep, uh, leads by lead source because, of, again, I've got lead forms I can connect to my website. I've got some very light campaign capabilities and a whole host of marketing automation connections and email marketing systems that I can connect to. Again, the premise being, Hey, let's get all that actual data inside our CRM so that we can analyze it all from within our dashboards and, of course, utilize the reports in Sugar. You logged into Salesforce. Uh, you go to your navigation bar at the top of the screen. No different here with, with Sugar. All of our different modules are available, even some that are hidden because of my screen resolution. I've got global search capabilities. And, of course, I can, navig I can customize this navigation bar based on uh, the modules that I'm more focused on. And you can control that all the way down to the specific user. So if a partic particular user is really only interested in driving their day through the use of accounts and contacts and managing their opportunities, well, you keep those to the left of the navigation bar, you keep the other stuff they're not using that much uh, over to the right, or you simply just hide it for their particular view. And again, this is, to Sonia's point, this is configuration. This isn't code. This is simply clicking, dragging to hide, and, and so on and so forth in the back admin panel. Let's go ahead and uh, jump right to uh, our list views. So as I'm looking at a contact record, for example, oops, reset that real quick. So as I'm looking at any of these different entities that make up my CRM, uh, just like Salesforce, I get these wonderful little list views. I have dashboards that follow me throughout the program. So we're looking at all the companies that we may work with, and then we have a nice little sidecar here. Again, configurable per user, so each user can get additional data right here from the sidecar. I can even hide that sidecar if I'm not interested in it. Sugar is going to empower a lot of uh, users to see the data that they want to see. Moving columns around is just a click and a drag. Creating filters to organize buckets of data, something that Sonia just showed you in Salesforce, that's going to be available too. Here you can see a custom filter that I created for a demo earlier this morning. And basically the question was, is I just want to see all the company records uh, in the state of California. And so I created a quick little filter based on the state field and the criteria being California, and I named it. Sugar's going to allow you to add quite a lot of complexity to that criteria if you need to. Okay, But that was a simple part. Now that I've logged into the system, that filter will always display. All I have to do is select it, and it automatically brings up the records that I need to see. There's a lot of CRMs in the marketplace uh, that, that can make a user go through hoops. And so for us here at BrainCell, we're always counting the clicks. These are two enterprise class CRMs. Um, if you have to do four or five clicks to accomplish something, we want to get that down to two or three clicks. And so we're always counting the clicks, and I, I, may, I, I must say that Sugar does a great job of uh, allowing the user easy access to d records in the system. It allows you to open up different tabs of the Sugar system so you can flip back and forth. Again, alleviating all those multiple clicks that some other CRMs have. Uh, uh, embedded into their system that, that, that you can't avoid as an end user. Okay, let's click over to the leads view. And again, the lead list is all of our unqualified contacts in the system. Nice little dashboard over at the side. I've got additional buttons like the ability to preview a lead. And I can do all this from my activity views, from my opportunity view, and so on and so forth. Nice little favorite options, so if I'm focused on particular records in the system, I can tag them as favorites. 
And again, I'm not doing that redundant searching. I'm simply just saying, bring up all my favorites in the system, and up they come, and I go to work, and I get my job done. Okay, let's go ahead and create a brand new lead record in the system. So, just like uh, Salesforce, there are several different ways to create new records. Sugar is going to place uh, create lead here in the navigation bar. Of course, I can click on any drop down and create a new record from that drop down. I also have a quick create option over here on the right hand side. Now, when I create a new lead, the form pops out. We'll start putting in Sonia's information today. Right now. And Sonia's going to be the president, because she is. We'll just go. And I'm just hitting my tab key to move through the fields. Maybe put in some address information. Tops field. MA. I don't know the zip code that well. I'm in the remote offices. But there it is. Completely customizable, by the way. Have the fields set in this uh, create new lead uh, form any way you desire. The, again, we're enterprise class uh, tools that we're talking about today. So all of the field at attributes that you would expect from enterprise CRMs, drop downs, required fields, currency fields. Um, you could even uh, design your forms to have dependent fields fields that may appear based on the responses of other fields and how you're, you're entering additional information in the system. You can do calculated formulas in these types of tools. Very sophisticated um, um, architectured uh, CRMs. Okay, so I've entered all my field data. I'm happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Sugar's going to drop that back down into my lead list view. A lot of people ask about the ability of uh, the security in the back end. And with either system, you'll have the ability to hide uh, buckets of data from individual users. And you can even go down to the field level, right? They can see the record, but the record's read only. And by the way, they can't see these particular fields. Only management can see those fields. Or maybe they can see the fields, but they can't modify them. Only management can modify them. Those types of things are available in both back ends with very very um, uh, highly configurable roles and matrices. But there it is. There's my Sonia Friedel record. She's now a unqualified lead in the system. And I'm going to go through my, my band, and I'm going to go ahead and qualify uh, Sonia. Once I create the record, dashboard view on the right-hand side, totally configurable. And then I start to see these subpanels. And this is going to be a major difference between the two programs. Sugar is going to put all of the calls and meetings and tasks and notes into different subpanels. Users have the ability to reorganize these subpanels. You can see here I had to scroll down to get the emails. So if I'm heavily reliant on my email integration with Outlook or Gmail or what have you, well, emails are going to go into that subpanel, so I'm going to move it higher, and that way I can get to it without scrolling, saving the user time. Adding calls, scheduling meetings. Putting all that data in is all going to be accomplished through these little plus buttons on the right-hand side. So I've dropped Sony in. Perhaps I met her at a, a trade show. Um, I start to place my calls. All I'm going to do is hit that plus button, and I'm going to enter in my call information. Again, another completely customizable form in the system. I'm working with a customer right now that needs additional fields in this play, and that's fine. We actually mock some things up for them. So I drop my first call in here. It's going to record the date and time. And because I made the call, I'm going to mark it as held. Put my details in and go ahead and save that information. Sonia says, hey, do me a favor. Call me back in two weeks. I want to pick up that conversation. Not a problem. I'm going to hit that same plus button. And I'm going to say follow up on next steps. I'm going to leave it as scheduled, and this time I'm just going to choose my two weeks out, set my time, 11.30 in the morning. 
again, I can schedule for other people and all the things that you would expect from this type of solution. But I'm going to leave that as scheduled. And upon saving that, not only is it going to save to my sugar calendar, but it'll push it out to my Outlook calendar, my Office 365 online calendar, or my Gmail calendar with plugins available in the marketplace. There is email included here in Sugar. It has its own email system. We're find, finding that less commonly used these days. Um, more people are interested in integrating it with Outlook, Office 365, or Gmail. And again, the Gmail and Office 365 integrations are available with a plug-in from the marketplace. But I've done my qualifications, right? I've, I've placed my calls. I've nurtured and qualified uh, Sonia's uh, record. And I see that she has real interest. So now I'm going to start and convert her to an opportunity and work that opportunity. And to do that, all a user is going to do is hit this little button up here at the top. It's searching for duplicate records. Does Sonia already exist? Does brain cell technologies already exist? Is there anything that I want to add to these records before I finally convert them? So at this point, as it goes to create an account record in the system, I may want to put in the website address. And I do that, and I still can't spell it. That's OK. Hold on, I've been around for a while. Uh, and I'm going to ask, I'm going to tell the system to create an opportunity with this as well. Keep it very simple here. I'm just going to say 250 widgets and go ahead and create that opportunity. So success, no duplicate of Sonia in the system. If brain cell technologies was an account in the system, it would merge Sonia to that record. And of course, at the same time, I'm also creating an opportunity. Where CRM technologies are going as a whole, uh, advanced uh, workflow capabilities, business intelligence, right? Artificial intelligence. Those are the big things that Sugar, that Salesforce are working on right now. Uh, and so when I create a new record in here, I may, uh, you may have, may have noticed before that there are some additional tasks that were created with the record. Well, that's part of the enterprise edition of Sugar. That's advanced workflow. And that's uh, a business process that's embedded into the back end of the system. Whole, whole different topic, something that we can definitely talk to you about offline. Salesforce has it. Sugar has it as well. But that's it. I'm done. I've converted that lead. And now I can see that Brain Cell Technologies has been created as an account record. I can see that the account record is created and associated down with Sonia's contact record and also the opportunity record. Of course, I go to the opportunity as well, and I see it's associated with Brain Cell and also Sonia's record as a contact as well. Subpanels. That's going to be the key difference when looking at these different views. Again, I have my nice field forms at the top. And I've got my subpanels to track as I work through this opportunity to close. And you're going to track your sales stages through the use of fields, not through a business process ribbon, not through paths. You're going to track it through simply just moving it through different sales stages in the system. In this particular demo, we have something called revenue line items. And revenue line items is basically associated to a product catalog. So I could have an opportunity with several different products. Let me add a couple now. I'm going to grab them from my product catalog. Throw 50 of those in there. And because I'm associated with a product catalog, I'm tracking the expected close date, the probability, and the sell stage of each particular product. Now, you can turn this off in Sugar. You can customize this dramatically. It just depends on how your business needs to be able to operate, products being, well, revenue line items being products and or services. So I added one revenue line item. I'll add one more. And we'll add 20 of those. And again, I've got my expected close dates, my sales stages. And you'll notice probability is shifting based on the sell stage. You can turn that on. You can turn that off. All this information down here, the likely value of the two opportunities, the two products that I'm offering and proposing to that customer, that's all going to be rolling up to the top of the screen here.
That's great, Garrett. And, and Garrett, I'm sorry here to, to cut you off, but we're kind of we're we're running here at the end of our of our demo section. I'm wondering if anyone else has questions that they want to put in that question box. And I also want to show um, if if you wouldn't mind selecting a customer journey. I know we didn't want to get too far into this, but as Salesforce uh, has paths that you can configure, Sugar has an add-in called Customer Journey. Um, and this is a product that is, is part of Sugar. It's a small additional charge per user, but it gives the same kind of effect. So you can see Customer Journey there. You can pick a journey that you want to follow depending on what kind of opportunity or lead or whatever, and you can even use this in a custom module. So it's very much like a Salesforce path. Um, it, it's a little more intense, actually, because you can toggle the journey, and this can be influenced by the back-end workflow. So you can show here, you know, these are the, and then you just configure all of these with point and click, but basically say, okay, these are the three stages of my journey, and these are the things that need to be completed in order to move on. And if you complete the first step, um, like this purchase product, then it could create a task in the back end for the accounting department to create an invoice, for example. Mm -hmm. So this, and you these, know, just these activities to show. against these mm -hmm. different milestones, right? They could be with you. They could be with another team member. They yep. could be uh, something you're expecting from the client, yep. right? And mixing that with your advanced workflow and, and all of that that Sonia mentioned, um, you could even notify different people as uh, activities come their way. Hey, you're up. It's your turn yep. on, on, on the uh, customer journey with uh, Mariner Energy. Really exciting stuff with this new plugin. Uh, it's yeah. been uh, in the marketplace for maybe a year now, right, Sonia? Yeah, and I'll, I'll say to you that this does something different than paths because paths, I think, is, is pretty straightforward and, and cool and easy to configure. Um, but you can see that progress bar on top of that blue area. Um, Garrett, if you go by the by the global search up top and show us a list view of customer journey. Um, yeah, why don't we do that? So this is a really new way of seeing CRM in general. And if we go and, and we look at all the customer journeys that are going on, it shows us these are all the different journeys that are going on in different, you know, in different areas of the system and how far they are. So in, instead of just seeing now a report based on a sales stage and a probability, for example, you can look here and see a visual progress of where things are stuck and what stage they're in. And this really is a different view into CRM. Things were very report-based and filtered before, and this is a little more visual, and I really, I really like the way this looks. I think it's, it's, it's exciting. It's a phenomenal improvement. It is. Yeah, and the, and the customer journey plugin, uh, Gene asks, it's twelve dollars a user a month, um, and it's you can have it with the professional version of Sugar, which is forty bucks a user a month, but it's most useful if you pair it with Enterprise because you have a really powerful process author tool where you can um, now spur things off of if something happens in a journey, then you can create a task for someone else or whatever. Um, and not all of your users have to have it, which is cool. So if you have, let's say, 30 sales users and 50 admin people using it, then you only have to buy 30 for your sales users. Yep. So that's pretty nice. And I'll grab a customer journey dashlet here to also show you different views. To yeah, that nice. That's some cool stuff too, yeah. That is really cool. Um, and then we have another question. This is kind of broad. This is a great thing just to mention um, it, about ERP integrations. So, you know, trying to ask a kind of a specific question. Do you have a screen where you can show fields that would integrate to an ERP system? It's a way deeper question than that. And in, in both Salesforce and Sugar approach it very similarly. Um, there are some pre-built plugins like for QuickBooks and Intact and NetSuite for both both systems. But really the invoices and things from the ERP system or, or any integration are gonna show up in a custom panel down below. So like where you see calls and meetings, you would just see an invoice area, or an invoice module, and that would be the same in Salesforce too. So you'd see an invoice area and that would show your accounting data. So that's a great question, and um, ERP integrations can be incredibly useful for sales teams to see what, what someone's purchased. Um, and then hey, Bob asked a great question too, what email marketings do you have for both systems? 
um, it, it, it really runs the gamut. So there are integrations for both Constant Contact and MailChimp with both Salesforce and Sugar, and those are the industry leaders. So if you use a different system, just Google, like, you know, my email system and Sugar and Salesforce, and you'll see what, what's pre-built. <clears throat> and then when we get to the marketing automation space, which is very different, we have got a recorded webinar from two, week, two weeks ago on a fantastic webinar we did on the difference between email marketing and marketing automation. Maybe we'll put that in the follow-up, uh, the recording there, and then you, you've got integrations. I'll, I'll name them that, that work with both Salesforce and Sugar, and that's Marketo, Acton, um, Pardot, um, eh, let's see, Sales Fusion, um, We've integrated HubSpot. with Mail before. Verve Mail, yeah. Hub a plug, but we made that work. Mm -hmm. Yep, HubSpot works with both. So y any of those enterprise systems, um, you're going you're gonna to have integrations with both. But if um, you, we're gonna, we have one more poll to launch, and that's basically, um, do you want a, a private tutorial with these? Because I know that we do have some people that have asked some real specific questions. So if you'd like us to reach out and give either a personal demo or just a chat about integrating to an ERP or so, something like that, just you know, click click yes. We won't be too offended if you say no. It's okay. We might still call you anyway. <laughs> but um, um, we will absolutely be following up with some people that had some pointed questions. Um, and. It, that's about it. Um, that's what we really wanted to show today was some of the main differences in the UI and all of that. Um, please, we'll stick around for a couple of minutes. If you'd like to put anything in the questions box, we're happy to answer them. But we really appreciate everyone showing up today. Again, we'll be sending out the recording of this webinar, um, along with some other recordings, like on, on email marketing and things like that that you may be interested in. So again, we thank you so much for joining. And we'll stop the recording here.